Green, green bars are up. And notice the volume bars correspond to the price bars. Red is down. I use price bars with an open, high, low close. If you use candlesticks, that's fine. Find what fits you. This fits me. It's what I've used for decades, and it works. And there's a great lesson here. Don't think that just because it's a red bar, like this bar right here, most people would look at this, and I'm going to enlarge this for you. Most people look at this and say, that's a bad bar. It's a red bar on heavy volume. Note, and this is something I teach all the time at Mission Winners, study the open, high, low close. Look at this bar. It gaps down. See the open? It drops and reverses and closes near the highs on a pickup in volume. Folks, they bought it. They didn't mm -hmm. sell it. They bought it right here. Oh, this is a red bar on pretty heavy volume. Note the open. Note the close. It falls down and reverses and closes near the highs on pretty good volume. Folks, they bought it. They didn't sell it. So don't think that just because it's a red bar, it's a bad bar. At the same time, don't think that just because it's a green bar, it's a good bar. Analyze the price and volume. And I need to tell you all something. This isn't rocket science. This is simple. Just green bar, red bar, and corresponding volume. And study them. All of a sudden, I will tell you this. Honest to goodness, it will start gelling for you. And you'll say, man, this is awesome. Now, let's take it a step further. Richard had a good point about like, what's going on now? Here's this run, okay? This drop. This is the kind of stuff that can chew you up alive, folks. Don't argue with it. Starts to lose the move. Remember we talked earlier about, hey, watch out. If it starts to lose the moving averages, especially the 50-day. Yeah, look at this. This bar right here, you could have gotten out there if you wanted to. And no, there's no day trading. I, I need to tell you all this. I haven't looked at a five-minute chart really studied a five minute chart in years. I don't look at them. There's too much emotion. in. It. Now, if you use them and they work for you, that's fine. I'm looking for bigger picture moves, but watch this. It falls down hard and watch this bar. It gaps down, right? Big gap down. No, I'll make it a bigger. Is that a little bit better to see Richard? Is that good? Yeah. All yeah, right, good, good deal. Thank you, sir. Closes here, heavy volume the next day gaps down, see that gap down? Runs and closes up near the highs on heavy volume. Resistance overhead at the 200 day, okay? Be real careful with a big tail bar like this, all right? Especially after a longer move, that's tougher to deal with. It's, it's riskier. It's, in fact, again, I taught statistics on a university level. This bar has a less likelihood or a lower probability of working then letting it base for a little bit and forming a higher low. So watch this. It drops down. People say, I'm buying on that bar. This is it. It's washed out. Yeah, and it gaps down the next day and you go, good Lord, what happened to me? Oh, and the next day it gaps up, runs up and reverses and closes down on heavier volume than the previous bar. It's just chopping around. This stuff right here will chew you up. When you see this, just stop. Don't do anything. Wait. Just because the market's open for business doesn't mean you have to do business. It's that simple. So what do we do with this? This bar right here, right here, quieter bar, gaps up, drops down, runs up, and reverses and closes near the highs. And I'm going to make this bigger for you. See that bar right there? On a pickup in volume. This is one of the simplest setups that I'll use. Okay. Now, this isn't as simple as a clean and simple flat base. So, so know this, this is more advanced than that, but it's a higher low. This low is higher than this low. It's that simple and we're buying. As it was thrusting up through this bar, we're buying here, okay? Which did we use? I'll tell you. We did this right in here with SSO. When it started doing it, we were picking it up on this bar, right in here. We had four buys in here as it started to lift and it works. It, all, it doesn't work every time, but it works more times than not. And it's simple. Conceptually, it's simple. It's a higher low. This low is higher than this low. Now watch this. Right here. It's going back. Let's shrink this a bit. It's dropping, and you're just getting chewed up, okay? And it keeps dropping. And then it falls. And it bounces around. Note this. It runs up 
it pulls back on less volume than these selling bars. And on this bar, it drops and closes near the highs on less volume, but still decent volume. But more importantly, it has a higher low. This low is higher than this low. Right there, you see it? This low is higher than this low. And on this bar, we were buying and it lifted. Does it work every time? Nothing works every time, but this is a great strategy tactic that we use. I'm gonna show you another one. I wanna drive home the point on the higher or low. Is that okay with you, Richard? Can we do That's that? That's absolutely fine, absolutely This fine. is a great, this is the real world setup. This isn't hypothetical stuff, folks. By the way, yeah, we owned this, okay? Here we go. NVIDIA, you can say this right here. Look, this is a higher low setup. You see this? And this was on the list and some of our VIPs bought it. This low is higher than this low. Starts to lift, they pick some up and that's a decent move. But watch this. Now that you've trained your eyes, it's doing this. And now I'll pause here because Richard asked this question. What do you do when the markets are crummy? You sit and you wait. You simply wait. Don't let this turn into a video slot machine. Please never think that you've got to do something all the time. You don't. You don't. Wait for the high probability pitch and swing. All right. It's much better than saying, oh, I'll just try. I'll just try. I'll just try. Wait for things to line up. And the money follows, especially if we focus on a gun. Again, a couple clean and simple patterns. Look at this. It's dropping and it's loose and it's whipping around. My gosh. And it drops to here. All right. You know, it looks like dirt. And then it rallies, comes up to the 50 day and it pulls back. And notice this. It lifted on pretty good volume here and it pulled back on less volume. So we say, OK, this low is higher than this low. But until it triggers, we'll just have to wait and see what happens. OK, it's just an inside bar. Increasing volume, though, that's a slight telltale sign. Doesn't mean to buy it yet. You need to take out the bars high, but it's a start. OK, oh, look, it gaps up and it goes and it pushes through the 21 day and the 50 day. And it does it on a pickup in volume on this bar right in here. And by the way, this was on the key list. VIPs knew about it and they bought. They bought right in here a couple of times and it does this Now watch. That's the eight period exponential moving average. And it just goes and it goes and it goes. You're selling some up here, by the way. OK, you know, and by the way, I will share this. I'll never buy at the bottom and I'll never sell at the top. You know who does that a lot? Liars. I don't know what the top is on that. You know, get what you can. But from right in here. You know, we'll call it 215, right in here, 215 up to here. I mean, folks, that's dang near 100 points. There you go. And what is it? It's the simple higher low pattern. There we go. Write it for all it's worth. And when it finally rolls over, you're out of the rest and you say goodbye. And it works. It works. Anyway, I wanted to point that out to you. That is a great real world setup. They talk a lot about the cup and a handle formation. I love cup and handles. You know what else I love? Clean and simple flat bases that everybody can see. Why? It increases the potential that they'll buy also. Focus on those and you'll do much better. It's what we look for. So um, while I'm talking about, is it, if it's okay with you, Richard? Go for it. Can I talk about just the basis for a minute? Absolutely. Is there, okay, very good. I'd like to show you a couple things here, folks. Just to drive home the point right here. Apple, chop it around a little bit, but look back here. You see the base? You see the volume pickup? Every, a sixth grader could, a fifth grader could look at this. Even me could look at this and say, hey, look at that's not too bad. Focus on those and you'll do much better. Here you go. Apache lifted through here and it ran up and then it reversed, okay? But what do we do in the situations like this, folks? You heard me say it earlier, you can't catch me in a lie. You sell some into strength, especially when you get a big gap up and it reverses down, you sell some. But note the clean and simple base, it works. Here you go, DAC, 
clean and simple base here. Runs up, reverses, you're gonna sell some on that, okay? Drops down, remember the market's squirrely, but note the longer clean and simple base and it lifts off. Look at the volume here. You know, again, it's like, oh, it's going sideways. I guess if it takes out that white line, that wouldn't be bad. Oh gee, it does on a pickup in volume. I guess we should buy through the white line. Yeah, yeah. Vanilla, vanilla, focus on this. EOG right there, simple entry. I want to do something here. I think it's important. By the way, again, my, one of my backgrounds is in psychology. And so if we always look at everything after the fact, we get this mindset that, oh, this is easy. You know what's a better thing to do, folks? Slide the chart back and train your eyes. And you'd say, oh, okay, it's going sideways. You know, it's just kind of, I could draw that with a crayon. Probably best not to do on your monitors. And it's just going sideways here. Um, oh, gee, look at that. Gosh, it picked up through the 50 day. By the way, all these are in leading groups. Every one of these were in leading groups. Look at the volume pickup. Gosh, I guess if it takes out that line, that'd be pretty good. Oh, gee whiz, it does. Look at that. And it's off. There we go. From here to there. That's it. It's vanilla. Halliburton. Base right here and a little shelf right here. And look at the volume pickup. Everybody saw this, folks. It's like, oh, look at that bar. Gosh, I guess if it takes out that white line, that'd be pretty good. By the way, yeah, we own these, okay? Oh, there it is. Over and over. Focus on those and you will do much better. And again, why? Because everybody can see them. I can't stress that enough. Now, I want to draw back here just a minute. All these stocks I'm showing you, all of them are in leading groups. Leading groups, focus on this. I'm gonna make this really, I'm gonna pull this together real quick. Focus on stocks in the top 40 or 50 groups out of 197. This is Bill O'Neill stuff. For those that don't know, yes, I was an IBD meetup co-leader for 12 years. And I talked about this on the big stage every month, just, and nobody heckled me either. I had a couple of things thrown at me, but I missed it, you know? So it was no big deal, right? It was good, keeps me limber anyway. But the sharp objects, tough deal. No, focus on clean and simple bases that everybody can see. Focus on stocks that are in leading groups. I've got research in here. I'd show this to you. This is crazy. I don't know if you can see it. I mean, folks, hold that up really close. This is from 2011, okay? But it talks about, I have to read this to you. If this is okay, you don't mind if I do that real quick, Rachel? Go for it, go for it. Not the whole article, I won't do that, okay? Here we go. Talks about the markets doing well. The degree of success in the markets is directly related to the adherence to sound buy rules. Let's look at some cases. Folks, I'd like you to really dwell on this. From August 2007 through October 2007, the market was in a confirmed rally. IBD identified 39 breakouts. Investors Daily identified 39 breakouts in the paper, okay? Each offered a valid buy point or buy range and had, had big volume through the pivot at the breakout. The composite rating of all these was 88 or higher. There's a constraint for you. The paper's giving it to you. Know this too. I don't work for the paper or for O'Neill and company, nothing like that. I'm being strictly objective with everything I say, everything I share. But this is important. I said that before, the composite rating was 88 or better. Here's how the 39 stocks did. The top performing tier, and this is power for you. 39 stocks broke out that IBD identified. 10 stocks did roughly four to 10 times better than the NASDAQ's advance. Four to 10 times better. Isn't that what you want? That's what I want. Four to 10 times better than the NASDAQ's 11.5% gain. All of them had a composite rating of at least 96. See, now there's an edge that you can use. You can say, you know what I'm gonna start doing? I'm not gonna look at stocks that got low composite ratings. You're stacking the deck in your favor. All of them had a composite rating of at least 96. Eight dwelled within the top 30 groups. Eight, eight of them were in the top 30 groups. The other two were in groups 41 and 53. What's that tell you? I just gave you numbers, a statistical edge on what to look for. 
the second tier. I want to touch base on this. That is that okay with you, Richard? Are we cool? Absolutely. Go for okay, it. Okay, very good. Thank you. The second tier. Nine stocks did roughly two to three times better than the NASDAQ's gain. Would you be happy? Oh, the market was up a 10%. How did you? Eh, the worst idea was I was up 20% to 30%. Yeah, you know. You know what you want? There's the edge that we use, foundations. Here we go. I'm going to say it again. Nine stocks did roughly two to three times better than the NASDAQ's gain. Okay? Seven. Seven of the nine had a composite rating of 97 or higher. And again, I'm a numbers guy. All right? And yeah, I'm wired pretty tight about a lot of different things. For those that don't know, I used to periodically teach outdoor survival skills at higher elevations over 12,000 feet and, and life and death situation. So yeah, we're wired tight. It was crazy once we were above the light and not a good situation, especially when you can smell it. Seven stocks did roughly that, right? Composite rating 97 or higher. Seven were in groups, industry groups, 30 or higher. I mean, folks, there's the recipe for the cake. I love that. Isn't that what we want? So what's the moral of the story? Leading groups and leading stocks. I've got to share another research and I've got a ton of my own research here. I'll show you this. Mm -hmm. This is from uh, this is from 2010. I'll hold that up. Mm -hmm. These are all my own notes and they've helped me They've helped me develop and refine my foundations of what I look for. Other article. This is from 2008, Investors Daily, 2008. In a study, this is powerful. I want to just share this with you. And again, Richard, I'm glad you asked me to be mm -hmm. on your show. I really appreciate it. And I know your goal is to help people. Mine is too. I'd like to share this with you. By the way, I like your work that you do. You present great information in a, in a good fashion that everybody can understand. I'd like you all to listen to this. This is Daily Graphs, Investor's Daily Research. In a study of the 600 best performing stocks from 1952 to 2001, folks, that's almost 50 years. That is a statistically valid sample size. We're not talking, well, they did really good for six months. I'm talking 49, 50 years. Isn't that what you want? Over time. I love this. Three out of four, okay, 600 stocks. That's also a statistically valid sample size. <clears throat> three out of four had earnings increases, averaging more than, are you ready? Three out of four of the 600 that made huge moves had earnings up 70% or higher before they broke out. 70%, that's huge power. The one fourth that didn't showed earnings increases of at least 90% the following quarter. 600 stocks, 600 stocks, and that's what they did. So I just wanted to share that with you, that focus on stocks that have great earnings. And this, this is for everybody. Focus on stocks that have earnings 40% or higher or average sales for two quarters, 40% or higher. Focus on stocks with a composite rating of over 90. Focus on stocks that are at least $12 a share, they're within 20% of 52 week highs that have an accumulation distribution of A or B and they trade at least 200,000 shares a day. And what I just said to you, if you wrote it down is a million dollar sentence. It will help you. It will really help you. And I'm speaking from my heart. These are things that I wish somebody would have shared with me and said to me years ago and said, hey, give up on all the other oddball stuff focus on this. Another point I want to bring up, and I'm mm -hmm. sorry if I'm belaboring the points, Richard, I'm not trying to go too much, but just trying to help, just like what you do, trying to help people, always limit losses, always. Never argue with, never argue with price. Clean and simple base, it's good above the line and it's bad below. It just makes it easy, okay? Focus on those, focus on volume surges through the pivot. Why? Think about this, let's be pragmatic. A stock breaks out and there's no volume. It tells us instantly, nobody's acting on it. Don't we want other people acting on it? Take these constraints that I shared with you, focus on those with clean and simple basing patterns, and you'll make 
money, it works. It works. Does it work every time? No, it doesn't. Even Bill O'Neill would admit it. If it if everything worked, he'd never have to talk about limiting losses at seven to eight percent, would he? So we're very pragmatic. We control risk. We'll ride trends for all they're worth, but we'll also control risk. And that helps us. And from a fundamental perspective, you now know what to look for. Focus on stocks in the top 40 groups. I'm going to summarize this really quick. Focus yeah. on stocks in the top 40 groups that last quarter's earnings were at 40% or higher, or the average sales for two quarters was 40% or higher. It's got a composite rating of over 90. And an accumulation distribution of A or B, it's within 20% of 52-week highs, and it's in the top 40 groups. Man, I'm telling you what, that's it. That's it. When it breaks out, look for a volume surges in a good market and ride it, ride it. Sell a little bit into strength as Richard and I discussed, sell 20%. It guarantees a profit, but it allows you to let remaining shares work much longer. And if a basis, if it goes up and then bases and forms another small base and lifts off, buy more shares. That's it. Wash, rinse, repeat.